Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to my Let's Play series of the uh, Day 4 Army General campaign in Warno, a new World War 3 or hypothetical World War 3, Cold War Gone Hot, real-time uh, combat game. A little bit clicky, but I've been enjoying myself with this game a bit. We've been playing it uh, for the last few days here. Just left Early Access. It's been in Early Access for about two years, I believe it was, but it just left Early Access recently, and sort of was the beginning of my engagement with this game. Although I have played the previous versions of the game by Eugen Systems that looked at, like, uh, Airland Battle and uh, European Escalation, Red Dragon, those games. Um, that being said, in episode number three of this series... This is a bit of a mix. In the first battle here, we've got a Soviet offensive with an armored battalion against an infantry force, and I think we have some armor support, but we're in rough, we're in rough shape. I'm trying to deploy a bunch of artillery uh, to save our asses here, but this is gonna be a tough challenge. This is basically a class A Soviet armored division against infantry with some artillery support and maybe some light tanks. We do have a Panzer Battalion, but it's a really ground down German Panzer Battalion that has mostly Leopard 1A tanks. So a lot of isolated or obsolete stuff uh, going against some, you know, top tier Soviet stuff. So we'll probably see a lot of T-80s versus... I think all I have is Leopard 1A1s, maybe some Mark 48s actually, but in any event, definitely not our top class stuff. So what I'm trying to do here at the start of this battle is deploy a bunch of anti-aircraft stuff in the rear to go with our artillery and to, you know, kind of figure those things out, as well as some munitions trucks here so that we've got plenty of ammo to keep these boys firing at the enemy. The problem is I'm not going to have a strong enough front or a universally sort of wide enough front to do much. I don't have enough anti-tank missiles to really stop them, and the quality of my own armor is pretty weak. And I will also say the other problem with this is I'm very much still in the how the heck do I play this game phase, because I haven't played a lot of Eugen stuff lately, and I think this first battle kind of shows that. Now, I have been playing more lately. In fact, yesterday's co-op game, um, I was I, I really kind of finally, toward the end of that, felt like I was starting to get my feet underneath me and starting to play better. So hopefully the following episodes will be better experiences. But we do kind of have, we've got two battles in today's video, one good one and this one. So if you want to know how not to play, maybe watch this one. Um, I talked about a little bit in the co-op video as well, and I do feel like it's kind of an interesting, you know, there's, there's an interesting divide in this game where, and I'm just sort of talking as I'm setting up some recon trucks, I'm going to go ahead and try and secure this center objective and then also push forward to the right and left objectives, Alpha and Charlie here. Um, but I think this, this game is interesting to me because what you really see in this, especially in these battles, in this battle in particular, is sort of what makes the campaign game unique or different. And that is, you have to fight with the units that are at your, your disposal. And I talked about this with Tortuga in yesterday's video, uh, the co-op game. A lot of people play War Game, or sorry, a lot of people play Warno with the sort of desire to build this custom division that they get to deploy into battles. And so that it is like, it perfectly fits their play style, right? Maybe you're armor heavy, maybe you're infantry heavy, maybe you wanna have different decks for different situations, but you wanna really craft the forces that are at your disposal based on how you like to play, based on the country you wanna play, the equipment you like to use, all those kind of things, right? Whereas in the can, and that's perfectly fine and it's totally something you can do when you're playing online, right? When you are playing a army battle campaign, however, which is what this is, you don't get those choices, right? I am fighting with a panzer battalion that is at like 50% strength, so a very depleted panzer battalion. I am fighting with an infantry battalion that is likewise at like 50 or 60%. Uh, I have a field artillery battalion, which is close to full strength, that's not on the front line. And then I've got some German air units as well that are helping support us in this particular battle. I do not have a ton of luxuries in terms of choosing what I want to bring to the fight. I'm bringing to the fight what the Soviets attacked. The Soviets attacked with a fresh force of, you know, it's not just an armor battalion. I think it's an armor battalion and a mechanized battalion and some air, I believe. But they atta are attacking fresh units against these worn down German troops that in theory, according to the story of this game, have been fighting for four days and have been greatly attrited. 
Um, keep in mind that like during the Cold War, the assumption was that like an individual tank crew in combat would last a couple of hours on the American side. The Soviets assumed that an individual tank crew would last five minutes or something to that effect. So like these are the the stakes of a World War Three. They're, they're casualties of like we have not seen maybe ever or at least not since like world war one um or maybe some eastern front battles in world war ii um and so like we're fighting greatly run down forces against fresh ish soviet forces um and so that's sort of the situation that we find ourselves in whereas when you play co-op again you can really customize everything you're going in full strength every single battle is a new battle there's no sort of carryover i think this shows both the struggle and the beauty of the co-op or of the of the army general mode right like you are you're forced to make do with what you have that does mean you're going to have some lopsided battles that does mean you're going to have situations like this where i'm trying to race forward these troops on the left flank with javelins to deploy in this wood line here so i can set up anti-tank missiles in a in a perhaps a position where i can defend these spots create choke points and slow the enemy down i'm not very good at doing this but i think it is a sound strategy when you don't really want to go toe to toe and so my theory in this battle and what you're seeing me do here is i'm trying to deploy troops in this wood line here up on the sort of left and also in that small little business park on the right so that we can get into these objectives we can take them if there's no soviets there and if the soviets you know do get there that we sort of fight along that line against the soviet armor so that our artillery in the rear here can shoot over the top of our troops and deplete the enemy and so that my air units can also come in and, and attack the enemy we can sort of bleed them out again not very good at the game yet so we'll see how well that works but that is the theory behind this we'll see how it plays out um this was taken from a live stream on my uh, twitch channel from a couple of days ago so i know i've been talking for a while here let's just go ahead and turn this back over to the audio from the gameplay and, uh, and just see how that plays out. But I guess what I'm trying to say is, this is in many ways the prototypical army general battle where you don't get to control everything, you don't get to go into a battle with what you wanna go with and you kinda have to make do, and you kinda see, okay, so that's what we gotta do, right? How's this gonna play out? And that's it's a unique challenge in this game that a lot of players don't ever get because if you play multiplayer only, you're probably not going to have that experience. You're going to have a different experience. We're always going in exactly as you want to go in. So I just, I think that's an interesting dichotomy there. But that's enough of me rambling. Let's go ahead and get into this thing as the fight's about to start. You can see we did successfully race forward. We did successfully take all three objectives. Um, and if the enemy decided not to push on us, we would win in eight minutes. But they're going to push, and we're going to see how that plays out. Here they come. You can shoot at these guys. You don't need any support for that, right? Oh, they ducked away. They're probing us out! Probably best to hold fire, right? Leopards behind these... Kind of like hedgerows over here. I don't know how much cover they really provide, but... Here. T-80s. Okay, well here you come, boys. Bring in the AT. Air attacks. Crush them on the left quickly. Try and fix them in position. It'd be cool if you could ever actually view the game from, you know, down low. Well, that tank already took a big hit. And it's gone. I think it did get one of the enemy. And then the A1s also did. Alright, I don't have a target for you guys on the left. They pulled back temporarily, so... Command zone lost. Never mind. Go back over here. There goes our armored units. Holy shit, they wiped them out fast. Oh, 
At least the tornadoes did their job. Okay, so... We got pretty thoroughly rocked here on the left flank. Those A1s suck. Tornadoes are evacuating. They did a lot of damage to the Russian armor on the left flank, and now there's a whole other column in. Loud and clear. Oh, that's not good. I need my air units back. Alright boys, try and stop them at least. Ah, oh, that tornado just got destroyed too. Or a different tornado did. I don't even know where that one was. Alright, so the right flank they've taken, the left flank is disputed. Is our artillery not actually shooting at anybody right now? Feels like maybe they're not. All that artillery I bought and I didn't give them weapons free. I suppose weapons free might be bad because it'll get them targeted, but... Yeah, the other problem with that right flank situation is that they can just roll down on us now. Which I think is exactly what they're doing. Yep. Maybe they won't have air support this far south. Or anti air, that is. <laughs> Holy shit, those artillery pieces direct fire against that enemy armor definitely went in our favor. Charge forward with the tanks! That didn't go well. That's a missile! deployed on the right flank. Oh, 
that our artillery fire? What are they shooting? Oh, eagles. Yeah, you get the eagles artillery. So then I can bring in the air support. Leopards are getting milked. Oh. So my armor's pretty much all gone. Where'd all my tanks go? I got command tanks, but that's about it. And I do have a fair bit of artillery I haven't deployed. I do have some recon tanks. I don't know how good those are. Recon tanks are coming. What well, bad thing with the cluster munition things is they just drop and go. The AT ones at least have multiple passes usually. I wish there was a little menu on the bottom where I could more easily select my artillery to do things. Alright, they took the left flank objective. If either side survives 60 minutes of combat, they will win on points after 60 minutes. Artillery is pounding left flank. You can see where the artillery was given something by the recon units to hit. And they're turning that part of the map into dust. And tank, go try to retake that left flank. Oh, there's an enemy up here. Apparently not. Well, my recon tanks just ran up the road directly point blank into the enemy. Oh god, there's a lot. This might be a bad, you know, discretion, better part of valor deal. Because I think I've already got myself overextended. But I guess if we're going to die... These are all class like one divisions 
based on everything we've seen. My spotting for these air units is terrible. Should get better here. Well, now they're just dropping cluster munitions on... Old contacts, I'm guessing? Goes our right flank battalion of uh, batteries. Swinging on the flank! Artillery is firing. Probably shouldn't be charging with a recon vehicle, but maybe it'll buy the leopard some time. It's over! Yeah, you can see vision here. Okay, we're gonna get wiped out. There goes our artillery. Well, Tank survive that? Alright. Well, we lost this one. That's for sure. I'm not going to call a bunch of artillery in to get killed. Like I did with the tanks. Is that our last unit? Yeah. Alright. Let's, uh, we probably should have surrendered a while ago. The well, counter battery worked until our front line got overrun and then it no longer could help. Uh, we lost 111. We only killed 72. So that one did not go in our favor. I'm assuming multiple of those units were stack wiped too. Yep, those units disappeared off the map. And they're pushing through. They're hitting the infantry to the south. I don't really have units to deploy, so we're just gonna auto resolve that. They'll probably wipe that battalion out. A total attacking victory. And they have definitely broken through here south of Beverung. All of a sudden that, that solid front line is looking pretty, pretty soft. Now our best units are not on the front line, keep that in mind. So our best units are on the way. Uh, Leibenau? They got an infantry battalion attacking a mechanized force? And I can have panzers support them? Uh, let's try and win this one.
All right, there's three objectives across the front of the map. We will not have any air support, so I'll need to get used to that. So in theory, this is a city battle. Or at least a suburb battle. Some air power would have been nice to come into this fight with, but... Alas. Now this is mostly enemy infantry, I think. We do have some armor. But I'm thinking this will mostly be an infantry battle. deploy some of our leopards. We'll deploy six of them. Did I only get the one command unit? Let's see what happens. In theory, this should be an even-ish fight. Ooh, we do have some A5s. That'll be nice. This may be unwise, but I'm going to give the artillery the option to fire at will. Enemy troops coming right down into this town. Some grounds, so some vehicles. 
We've got basically these are like the German version of a uh, AFV. I don't, I don't see them yet, but the mar the martyrs are basically kind of like an early Bradley type deal. Alright, we know we I can see enemy artillery. What are they shooting at? Everybody fire at that position. That's where enemy Artie's hitting us from. So we're hitting the enemy infantry as they come down through this objective. But I would rather fire at enemy artillery positions. It sounds like a Tushka's almost. Got some anti-tank weapons too, it looks like. I wonder if I set those boys to counter Oh no, they're hitting me. They're using they're doing counter battery fire. Do, can you do counter battery? Can you They wiped out one of my batteries already. New line further back. We're basically inhabiting this city block here before they come up on us. They've got the far right flank objective. There's a grod. Can you destroy it? Go get it. Is that like a turretless Bradley? Yeah! Chain gun, get it. I don't have any air, so... It's a self-propelled artillery piece, the Grod. Got him. my armor or are they just sitting around doing nothing or did they all die whoa it's always fun to watch the enemy roll up and just get spetsnets send in the armor oh, there's some more oh shit they got enemy air there's our 20 millimeter flak I got one of my leopards in that tree line. Can you guys do counter battery fire? Will you automatically shoot back there even though you don't have... Well, you can see it, right? Yeah, there you go. Coordinates. Firing, firing. Could use artillery in that area though. anti-tank, mostly just infantry. Yeah. Not really as... No, they're gonna shoot you! Alright, we got one of the Spetsnazes. Well, they got... they get that whole Leopard unit, or was it just one Leopard? That's what artillery's for. We'll have some of the artillery stand counter battery fire, but I need that Artie to support us up here. If we're gonna have any chance of holding over here. I already deployed most of my infantry and most of them are dead. Bravo, 
still got armor. I'm just a little bit nervous about deploying them. Nice. Artie's just wrecking these buildings. You, every time you see a plus one, you may not see it on the screen, uh, but every time you see a plus one, it means an enemy, you know, enemy unit, I believe, infantry unit probably was destroyed. My artillery is under fire. And those guys are destroyed. We've got a little bit of an artillery duel going on, though. Our guns are shooting back. These rock and enemy infantry. Okay, so I don't really have infantry left. I guess these guys can all unload. Let's push further into this map. This is a very different kind of a fight. The previous fight, you pretty much saw what was coming at you with the enemy because it was a lot of armor, a lot of vehicles. This fight is m a lot of infantry, and so it's kind of a very different vibe. Oh no. Enemy air! Oh, they have air power and I do not. Well, that wasn't great. My, my two marauding marauders, or martyrs. Another grod. Bam, bam. Boom, 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 Get it! Got him. Another enemy artillery battery silenced. Can you switch unit markers to NATO symbols? Uh, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. And wow, they just rocked me. Poof! There goes, they just deleted that German unit. I don't like fighting against enemy air when I have no air. Makes me hesitant to deploy anything. Another Grod, nice. Another one! Artillery hunting, boys! Get him! Two 
Too bad I already lost most of my guns. Alright, we know they've got some guns back this way, too. Maybe we can send the Marauder up the left. No, oh, don't go down the main road. You'll die that way. We're gonna need more ammo, too. Wasted an anti tank missile on that dinky thing? These guys are all out of ammo? Alright, can we move some of these infantry forward a little bit? We gotta try and take these hexes on the flank to have any chance. Which pans are grenadiers under attack? Oh. Well, enemy artillery hit us from somewhere. My already is set to counter battery, right? The problem with the grads is they can move around so damn quick. Fire mission takes forever. Nice. So these Panzer Grenadiers are just chewing these boys up as they try and retreat across their front, I guess. Eagle is destroyed. Not that that helps me too much. The artillery came in behind where they were. Get out of there if you can. Fine, 
Alright, this will probably be another conquest defeat. They'll probably, I would assume, count our batteries over there. I guess we can call in our armor, but I just, it makes me real nervous. I've got the points, I can try and just do a big push. It seems unwise to me, but... I could seed the map with some anti-tank stuff. You'd be watching. Oh. Can you guys do something? Can you shoot back over there? More of my artillery gone. So that artillery battalion is basically dead. The Panzer Brigade or battalion is in pretty good shape, but that's just because it hasn't deployed yet. Shouldn't even, they've probably already moved. Just switch over to fire will, I guess. Armored fist. Go. They're hitting my artillery cell. I need better recon. I think that's one, one big problem, amongst others. Enemy air is gonna come in. I do have some... I thought I had some flak pieces with them. Those are not very effective against enemy air. Uh, we do have... Probably too late to deploy them now, but... Get moving forward, boys. Don't sit there and let the enemy artillery pound you. Also, just kill all the enemy command vehicles, and that'll win them for us too. Actually, I think we just did that on the left flank because we definitely didn't kill all the Germans over there. Artillery! All right, so we got these two left and left flank objectives now. It is weird in this game how if the enemy has no command vehicles, you can't die. Like they can't die, or they can't they can't win. Sorry.
Enemy air, warning. We do have a handful of flak units, but... I think there's some enemy... Oh shit. We're driving... Ah! Just overwhelm them. Vehicles here, probably. Focus on the anti tank. I just lost a command vehicle. The enemy obviously just got a command vehicle back. Got all their anti tank vehicles. Alright. I didn't quite have a chance to see how many men we lost there, but it was probably not a good amount. Enemy morale is 107%. That can't be good. Well, it says ours is 110, so. Alright, command zone captured. Ever watch the tournaments? No. All I know is I'd be very bad at it. Something's garroting me. But it's behind where my boys are. My boys moved out of where the artillery is shooting now. Thankfully it is. It's coming from over here. So it's another grod. Oh, well, maybe that hit the rear of my units. Charge through it. That's my lesson here. If you're getting hit by enemy artillery, you just charge through it. Alright, the morale is starting to drop. Command zone lost. How? I can come join these guys or headquarters units. I got one. I wonder how many grads they frickin' have. They sure have a lot of artillery. There's more out this way. It just keeps hitting me.
Oh, Lumper destroyed. Okay. Do we not have a headquarters unit? No, we do have a headquarters unit here. Don't move through that artillery, though. Be their last grot, I'm not sure. Uh, not sure. We have all three command posts as we're seven minutes from Vic. Oh, no, we lost the command post on the left. Or at least we didn't. We don't hold it. Oh, the shit, there's a lot of grods here. Tanks are running low on fuel. Get that any tank before it can deploy. Can you not shoot at anything? Maybe get out of there. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and jump in here. We've been going for about an hour. We fought effectively two battles, uh, but this battle just turns into a whack-a-mole of chasing units around, so uh, it's a little bit silly of an ending, but I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead here because there's really not anything interesting to watch. Just my tanks chasing to the edge of the map, the BM-21 grods running away, my tanks running low on fuel, and all of that jazz. Okay, victory. I don't know that it'll be a total victory. It's a minor victory. Uh, we killed 108, lost 94, so we actually inflicted more damage on them than they on us, despite the fact that we wiped out most of our troops. Nonetheless, slight victory for us. So that enemy attack fails. Looks like a couple of those battalions were destroyed. But nominally, it was it was a defeat for them. We at least slowed them down. Okay, everybody, that's going to do it for this episode of Warno, our army general campaign. Um, this is the end of turn two. We'll move into turn three. And then the rest of this live stream is me just sort of talking through the tactical situation, which I think we'll talk about in our next video. If you'd like to see more of this, leave your thoughts below. One decently fought battle that we won, but not maybe as decisively as I'd like. That enemy artillery was a real nuisance. And then also, you know, one disastrous battle. The British have brought up several regiments, though, in our, in our, and are in position perhaps to counterattack the Belgians as well. So we may launch a counterattack east of Varburg to try and blunt the assault there. There's a lot of enemy threats up near Beverung. That's where we lost those couple of battalions in the first battle. We'll see how that shapes out, though, in the coming videos. Until then, however, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'm out.